Hello there and welcome to this class. My name is Kerstin Mubali and I'm here to take you on the subject chemistry. Our theme for today is chemical world and our topic is particulate nature of matter. This topic has three parts so we are going to be taking the first part in our class for today. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. It means that matter is anything that can occupy space. Almost everything that we can see, feel, touch, or even smell is made of matter. Now, because matter has weight and volume, there are some particles that make up this matter. Matter exists in four states. They are solid state, liquid state, gaseous state, plasma state. Because matter has weight and we say it can occupy space, it means that there are particles that matter is made up of. Let's take a look at these particles. Particles of matter, they are atom, molecule, ion. Let us quickly take a look at each of these particles. What is an atom? An atom is the smallest part of an element or a substance that can take part in a chemical reaction. Examples of atoms are hydrogen atom, oxygen atom, helium atom, nitrogen atom, and a whole lot of other atoms. Here is a diagram representing some atoms. Here we have the hydrogen atom, the carbon atom, and the oxygen atom. Atoms most times do not stand by themselves. This means that they do not exist alone, except for some atoms such as the helium atom. But most times, atoms are found in combined states. Now, an atom can combine with another atom of the same element or another atom of a different element to form what we call a molecule. What is a molecule? A molecule is a group of two or more atoms bonded together. But unlike the atoms, molecules can exist on their own and still retain the chemical properties of the individual atoms. Now, this means that, as we said earlier, an atom can bond with another atom of the same element or another atom of a different element to form a molecule. For example, let's say the oxygen atom, let us represent the oxygen atom with the capital letter O. This atom can bond with another oxygen atom to give us two atoms of oxygen known as the oxygen molecule. In this case, two atoms of the same element are bonding to produce a molecule. Another instance, we say that an atom can bond with another atom of a different element. For example, a carbon atom, represented with the letter C, can bond with an oxygen atom to give us this molecule known as carbon monoxide. So, these are atoms of different elements bonding together to produce a molecule. Now, we also say that more than two atoms can bond to give a molecule. For example, this diagram here shows us two elements of the same atom, that is why they have the same color, and another atom. The three of them can bond to give us this molecule here. Examples of molecules are, we have water, have sodium chloride. Water forms a molecule with three atoms which are one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen 
we have another molecule here known as ammonia this molecule contains four atoms and they are one atom of nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen to give us this molecule known as ammonia therefore we can see that atoms are like building blocks we can have one atom combining with another atom sometimes atoms can even combine in very large numbers to give us very large molecules these molecules we have outlined on the board are just simple molecules because they just have a few number of atoms forming these molecules some molecules can have as many as thousands of atoms forming them for example the starch molecule so this gets to tell us that atoms are like building blocks just as we have letters being bonded in a word but each of the letters still retaining their characteristics as alphabet so the atoms that make up the molecules still retain their individual characteristics as atoms for example the oxygen that forms carbon monoxide with carbon this oxygen is still an oxygen atom even if it is to react in another molecule or in another compound so they retain their individual characteristics as atoms an ion an ion is an atom or group of atoms which possess an electric charge due to the gain or loss of electrons we are going to be talking more about electrons in our next class but right now it's important for us to know that an electron is a particle found in an atom so it means that an ion is formed from the atom so if an atom gains or loses electron it becomes an ion now if an atom gains one electron or more it becomes negatively charged and to now be referred to as an ion but when an atom loses one or more electrons it becomes positively charged and is referred to as cut ion a substance look at this substance say so that a substance is electrically neutral when it has the same number of protons and electrons so we have a neutral atom here this neutral atom means that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons that is what makes it a neutral atom but when it loses one of these electrons any of its electrons it becomes a cut ion becomes positively charged but when it gains an electron from any other atom it becomes an anion and it is negatively charged now we mentioned earlier that matter exists in four states and we said there were solid states the liquid state the gaseous state and the plasma state but for the sake of our study today we're going to be limiting ourselves to the first three states of matter now this means that substances can exist as solids liquids or gases in fact some substances can even exist in the three states of matter take for instance water water can exist in the solid state as ice it can exist in the liquid state like the liquid water that you and i drink and use for washing and cleaning it can also exist in the gaseous state as steam when it is heated to a certain temperature this means that matter undergoes changes and the changes that matter undergo are what we refer to as physical and chemical changes what are physical changes a physical change of matter is one in which no new substances are formed when they react and which can be easily reversed when we say no new substances are formed we mean that no other substance is formed outside the reacting substances this is because in a physical change the chemical properties or internal makeup of the reacting substances were not altered were not changed they were not touched and so 
new substances cannot be formed. For example, we have salt and water. When mixed together, we have a salt solution. In the formation of this substance, this salt solution, no other substance was formed. Nothing new was formed. It still is salt and water. Now, if this salt solution were to also react back, they will give the exact salt and water that started the reaction. And so, this is why we say that they are easily reversible. It means that when substances react from react and give a product, the product can equally react to give back the substances that started it. Also, here is another instance. We have solid water here, known as ice, and we have liquid water. When this solid is heated, it forms liquid water. This liquid water can as well turn back to solid water. And so it means that it can easily be reversed back. Other examples of physical changes we have are salt and sugar solution, melting and freezing of ice, boiling of water, magnetizing and demagnetizing of iron rods, separation of mixtures by evaporation, distillation, sublimation. All these are known as physical changes of matter. Let us see what chemical changes are. Now, a chemical change is an exact opposite of a physical change. A chemical change of matter is one in which one or more new substances are formed when they react and which cannot be easily reversed. This means that in a chemical change, the chemical properties or internal makeup of the reacting substances are changed, they are altered. And so in forming products, some new substances are included in their products. Let's take for example, here is an image of fresh egg. When this fresh egg is heated, it forms another form that we call the fried form, the fried egg. This fried egg cannot be reversed. It cannot go back to the form in which it was before. And so we say that this egg has undergone a chemical change. Also, we have the burning of wood. When this wood is burned, it changes to ash and coal. And you can see that in this form, it cannot revert back to the way it used to be before. Another example is nail, the metal nail that we all know. When this nail reacts in the presence of oxygen, it forms rusty nails. These rusty nails cannot come back to the form that it was before. So that is why we say that in chemical changes, the reaction cannot be easily reversed. Other examples of chemical change are burning of firewood, as we have seen, fermentation of substances such as palm wine and a cassava paste, decay of substances, rusting of iron, as we have seen, production of drugs, and digestion of food. Now, let us take a quick summary of all we've learned today to see how much we can remember. We say that an atom is the smallest part of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. We also say that a molecule is a group of two or more atoms that are bonded together. An ion is an atom or group of atoms which possess an electric charge due to the gain or loss of one or more electrons. We also say that a physical change is one in which no new substances are formed when they react and which can be easily reversed, while a chemical change is one in which one or more new substances are formed when they react and which cannot be easily reversed. Having said this, let us do a quick test to know if we still remember all we have learned. Which of the following is an illustration of a physical change of matter? A. Burning of wood. B. 
fermentation of substances c melting of ice if you chose either a or b then you are wrong the correct answer is the melting of ice remember that we say that in a physical change new substances are not formed and they can be easily reversed so our answer is c in a and b which are wrong new substances are formed for example in the burning of foods new substances are formed and in the fermentation of substances new substances are formed it is only in the melting of ice that we do not have the formation of a new substance when two or more atoms combine together they form a dash a molecule b ion c bond If you choose the option A, then you are correct. Remember we said that a molecule is formed when two or more atoms combine together. With this, we have come to the end of our class for today. See you in the next class. Thank you.